Hello, this is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube series on Advanced Analytics and Data Science. Hopefully you've joined me before. I normally do one of two things. I normally cover a particular uh, problem that someone in industry is facing um, and how data science or analytics can help. Or I cover a more of a methods, a, a, a topic and with some uh, tools that you can use to address that topic. So today it's the latter. I'm actually talking specifically about simple forecasting methods in R um, and the, the actual topic that we'll be talking about is seats, um, a type of time series decomposition. It stands for seasonal extraction in ARIMA time series. If you joined us last time, we talked about X11 um, decomposition. And next time, we're going to be talking about in R12, we're going to be talking about um, seasonal time series, um, uh, actually low S uh, decomposition. So hopefully you can, can join these. The tool that we'll be using today is R, but we're not limited to R. We talk about Statistica, Spotfire, Python, um, different commercial and open source methods. So let's just get into some seats. So again, seasonal extraction in ARIMA time series, and we'll be talking more specifically about ARIMA and some of the upcoming uh, videos that we have. Just to let you know a few things about seats. As it was developed by the Bank of Spain, so a lot of government agencies across the world are actually using this particular method. Um, it works only on quarterly and monthly data. So if you have hourly um, data, minute data, any any other uh, thing that, that you have a, a, a time series with, you'll need to um, adjust or use an outside method for that, um, some alternative approach. And uh, let me give you a couple of references. This Heinemann and um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to try to pronounce uh, George's name. Um, you can reference this this uh, via OTEX or a lot of this particular seats uh, conversation you can find in this book by Dagum and I am Consini. <laughs> Um, and you can find that on Amazon. We're going to be using this seasonal package um, today, and we're going to do something very simple, but to let you know, and we used this last time by the, X, the X11, we actually used um, this seasonal package as well. Um, you can find more information here, and you know some of the functions that are available within this, this package um, I've got listed here. So if we go to our studio, I've got a simple, very simple um, script here, but I want to mention a couple of things. Number one, and I made a comment to myself so that I would make sure that I commented on the forward pipe operator. We've been using this for, I think, two or three, possibly, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, this, this, uh, you know, uh, percent percent greater than percent is actually a forward pipe operator and it allows you to not explicitly state things um, in the code. It really uh, makes your code more compact, more terse, um, and basically what you're doing is you're pa passing on the results from this particular um, function in downstream. So I'm passing this, uh, the the results of the season or C's function into the autoplot function here. So hopefully that makes sense. Also, if you use just this library uh, seasonal um, and you don't use the package that we've been using up here, this FPP package by Hyman, um, this is going to error out because this autoplot is actually in this FPP package. So you're going to use the auto plot, make sure that you execute both of those. And then we're just going to look at the same thing. We're going to um, 
come up with a decomposition of the uh, uh, of this uh, electrical equipment index. And if you were with us last time, you'll see that this series is very close to the X11 that we saw last time, but certainly, and both of them are much better than the classical decomposition. Um, the classical decomposition, um, we saw that when we looked at the remainders, we had a series of, of remainders, um, some residual effect here in the remainders that this, this particular um, method has taken care of. So, Obviously, we want those remainders to be, um, you know, non-correlated. So with that, that's simple, and that was easy. Next time, we're going to be talking about STL decomposition. I hope you can, can join us. If you have comments, please send me an email. Thanks.